All right, you ready? Okay, welcome to Millionaire Mindset. Have your mind set to make millions. And if you can't make millions, make hundreds of thousands. A lot of people have been wondering and want information on the hospitality business. The key word is business. Owning a hotel is not real estate. It's a business. If you own apartments, you give them the keys, they stay in your place, they pay your rent. If something breaks, you may send somebody over to fix it, and that's it. When you go in a hospitality business, it's a whole other world. Okay, you can run an apartment building with one person per 100 tenants. One person in the office and one person out doing maintenance. That's what it takes per 100. In a hotel, 100 rooms is probably going to take about 50 people. 200 rooms, 100 people. So you better know what you're doing. You better be ready to go on a roller coaster ride. Okay, because well, some months you're making money, some months you ain't making money. You got a big staff. You got to be open 24 hours a day. Desk clerks, housekeepers, housemen to go in before the housekeepers. And you got laundry department. You got people in there washing and uh, washing and drying and folding and moving shit around. You got all kinds of shit. You got chemicals. You got supplies out the ass. You got furniture to maintain. All this Airbnb is actually, listen, if you got one little place or two little places and you can handle it, that's fine. That's great. If you can make extra income renting out your damn room or your or house you got, and and you and you're willing to do all the bookings and do all and get the cleaning done and make sure the place stays in good shape, that's fine. God bless you. But that's not really the hotel business. The hotel business is when you have a lot of people coming in and they all want to come in at the same time and you got them all leaving at the same time and you got more people coming in and it's a revolving door and you got to have the rooms clean right away and then you may have banquets going on and events going on. If you have a restaurant, you really about to throw the towel in. You better think twice before you go to hospitality business. There are management companies out there, but you want to see some money get spent, go into hospitality business. We got people driving people back and forth to the airport. We got a full-blown restaurant open with dishwashers and cooks and servers and food coming in and uh, all kinds of stuff going on. It's crazy. So you're not in real estate if you're in the hotel business. You're in the hotel business. Okay, and if you got a franchise, you better really have your shit together because they got to do everything the way they say to do it. And it ain't cheap sometimes. But you're part of the franchise, so you gotta do it. You gotta go by their rules. If you have an independent hotel, you kinda, you know, just do the right thing on your own. It makes life a little easier, but if you're not in the right location, you're not gonna make as much money as having a franchise. Because the franchise is there for a reason. They do all kinds of marketing, they have procedures, they got a whole system, they got a, a, a group of people that, that are loyal to the brand, and they direct people towards you. You know, it's a big, big operation. And luckily, I ain't got much to do with it because it's way too much for me to deal with. In order to be in the hotel business and have a franchise, you're going to have to prove to the franchise that you have qualified, certified people there to operate it. And they will be continuing education courses that have to be maintained by all personnel there. So you can't just jump in. That's why a lot of times you may have to be use a management company because you may not be allowed to operate a hotel. The franchise has to make the decision. They'll make, they may not even let you own it. You can have a shitload of money, but if they don't think you uh, got a good plan or you have the wherewithal to handle it, you know, you won't get approved as an owner. You know, you got to get approved as ownership. You got to get approved as management. And those agreements can go out a long time. They can go out, you know, depending on the brand. You can go out 20 years on a, on a franchise agreement. Typically, I think it's 10. But it's a negotiation. If you give them a long franchise agreement, they might give you a reduced franchise fee. Ah, everything is negotiable. Is there a magic number of rooms that's worth getting into that? It's very hard to make a lot of money, or at least have the opportunity to make a lot of money if you have less than 100 rooms. I tried it. Less than 100 rooms, it doesn't put you where you want to be. And it's got to be somewhere there's a demand. You don't want to buy a hotel 
where there's no reason for a hotel to be there, or maybe there was at one time, and there's no reason anymore. Like 19 here used to be the main road before they built the freeway. But once they built the freeway, nobody travels on 19 anymore. So what happened to all these hotels on 19? They went down. And now, people either stuck with them, or they gave them away. It's not like a, a place where people want a place to live. That you can normally rent anywhere. You know, Airbnb is okay, but how many, they don't tell you about how many people don't get rented on Airbnb. I like to know that. You know, if you got your place on Airbnb all the time, how often is it getting rented? It all depends on location, location, location. It's like owning a restaurant type business too. And then if you own both, oh my God, you're really in trouble with the food and the condiments and the paper goods and the pots and the pans and the dishes and the laundry and the pillowcases and the pillows and the mattresses and the sheets and the blankets and everything and the toilet paper. Holy shit. You want to see a shipment of toilet paper? Go look and see when a hotel gets a shipment. Computer systems to keep track of the rooms. And then you got the marketing department. And then you got the banquet department. And you got the management department, you got revenue management to make sure you got a certain person with their job is to just make sure that you're charging the same rate that everybody else around you is so you can stay competitive. And guess what? Those rates change every night. Sometimes they can change more than and once in a day. So think twice, think three times, make sure. But if you want to buy a hotel, I got five to sell right now. <laughs> Go to BenMallard.com, consult with Ben, and I'll tell you all you want to know about them. They can be very profitable, but you got to be in there willing to work them and have big staffs and take on all that responsibility. Or hire a management company, but it better be a good management company. What's the cheapest way to get into hotel business? The cheapest way is you can still go find a small mom and pop kind of old and outdated and that's mainly the reason why people aren't staying there anymore because typically you can make it with a small place anywhere you know mostly but you can always find a small mom and pop right now you can steal them because of COVID everybody went dead okay you can steal hotels right now especially if it's not no big you know attraction area so you can buy a fixer-upper you come in and you can fix it up like you would an apartment paint the place put some nice furniture in there some nice flooring a decent uh, bathroom you know and make it a nice decent place and make some money if you buy it right but every so many rooms you're gonna need more staff you know if you're gonna run it yourself have fun with that you can't sit in an office 24 hours a day Luckily, a lot of things are done online now. We built those 10 rooms in John's Pass kind of remotely from all our hotels. Luckily, because of online systems, we're able to uh, do a lot of the management from there. We still got to send people over to clean it. Still got to send people over to fix stuff. Make sure you realize you're not going into real estate. You're going into a business. So which hotel makes you normally the most money? Franchise or your own? The only way you can survive if you have a non-franchised hotel is you have to have such a strong demand from the public that they're gonna rent from you too. Like on the beach, we don't have a franchise. Why? Because we don't need it, it's the beach. There's always plenty enough business to go around for everybody and uh, we get our share of the business. Okay, people are there, they'll just stay in somewhere. And Okay, plus I like the franchise because it makes you more professional. It has all rules that you have to go by. Uh, you know, like people used to complain all the time. You know, I about the affordable housing and all the rules. The rules kind of keep you in line. It makes you run your business the right way. You know, so in a way I look at it as a good thing. You know, the franchise got all these rules. Why? Because they know the business. And if it worked for them, it should work for you. Even when the hotels had nobody in them, okay, this past year, I didn't want to shut them down, okay? Because when you shut a place down and you get out of the system and everything just stops and it's a pain in the ass to put all that back together and, and build up your whole whatever, rep or whatever, it, and you know, it just, and then you still got to keep the place operating as far as air conditioning anyway. And uh, some expenses you're not going to get away from. I'm not going to get away from the mortgage. I'm not going to get away from the taxes. I'm not going to get away from the insurance. I'm not going to get away from our, the utilities are still going to be there. They won't be as much if the place was, you know, filled with people taking showers and stuff, but I'm still going to have utility expenses. I still need people that are watch the place. 
you know. So I'd rather bite the bullet, feed the monster until all this blows over, keep them open, and uh, hopefully now things are going to come back and uh, I'll be able to sell them and not make as much as I hope to make, but it's too much business for me. Okay, I mean, if we had them all in one town, that wouldn't be so bad. But I got them 200 miles apart from each other, and it's too much for us to handle. Now, if they were apartment buildings, I don't care if they were, you know, wherever, a thousand miles away, we could handle it. If it was triple net, it could be anywhere in the goddamn United States. It wouldn't matter. Okay, but hotels, I need to have them close to me if I'm going to run them right. Just a sense of being there, knowing that I got my finger on the button or I got a whole bunch of people around me that can help with that property, then uh, it makes you feel much more stable. Listen, if you are thinking about doing a deal or you're in the middle of a deal or you're not sure if you got to refi or sell or whatever you possibly have a problem with in real estate, go to consult with Ben and let's talk about it. BenMallon.com. What is it? Slash shop. Consult with Ben. You get Rafael on the phone. You make an appointment that's convenient for you. And I'll get on the phone and we'll work it out. Or talk about whatever you want. You know, what your plan is to get into real estate. What you plan to get out of real estate. What you plan to grow in real estate. It doesn't matter. Get me on the phone and let's talk about it. Who else do you know that you can talk to about it? Huh? Think about that. Who else do you know that has got all the real estate experience I have that you can pick up the phone and talk to right now? Okay, I don't know. If you got them, great. If you don't, call me. Adios, amigos.